All right, welcome back to the channel. Let's get back on my favorite weight class in boxing, the welterweight division. Mikey Garcia says he is interested in a fight with Sean Porter or Keith Thurman. Does not mention the name of your Danny's Ugas, but your Danny's Ugas did not did did notice that his name wasn't mentioned and had something to say about it. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So let's talk some welterweights. Mikey Garcia said that he wants to fight Sean Porter or Keith Thurman. He's ready to get it on. He does leave out of his mouth, however, the name of your Danies Ugas, who is an excellent, excellent fighter at 147 pounds. And somehow nobody at 147 knows how to say his name. Let's talk about that. But before I get into that, I want to say a special thank you to everybody that supports the channel in the live streams, uh, who donate their time, who donate their, their time and conversations with me. Also, the super chats that you guys give are absolutely wonderful. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you to everybody that supports over on Patreon and everybody that has joined the channel as a member. I truly appreciate you guys' contribution and looking forward to chopping it up with you in the next live stream. Let's talk about Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is one of the better fighters in boxing. He was a guy that was on the pound for pound list, rightfully so, for a while. I don't know if he's still there, um, but he was a champion at 120. He is 126 pound champion. He was 126 pound champion for sure because he beat Orlando Salido to win it. Who also who then beat uh, Vasily Lomachenko. So yep, he's 126 pound champion. He was 130 pound champion. He was also 135 pound champion and 140 pound champion. But then you know he bit off a little bit more than he could chew up at 147 pounds by trying to fight, uh, trying to fight. Errol Spence Jr. because that's about all he did was give it a good effort because he definitely got mopped up in that fight when he fought for when he tried to jump and go for all the gusto and get uh and beat Errol Spence Jr. But now he still decided that he is going to stay at 147 pounds. I suspect because of a combination of things. One, he's hard headed. And number two, there's nobody for him to fight at 140 pounds because Bob Arum has a monopoly on 140 pounds and he ain't getting a title shot at 140 pounds because of that, which, by the way, reminds me, I should have said that in the video that we did today about Bob Arum and Dana White and how Dana White accused Bob Arum of ruining the sport of boxing. That is a perfect example of why somebody might say that about Bob Arum. You have the bet, in my opinion, the best 140 pound fighter in the world. Mikey Garcia. And I think that is a fair that's I think it's realistic to say that that's the case. Right. Um, because he's an excellent fighter and he is and he lost to one guy at who was a big 147. He mopped sir. He mopped Sergey Lipinitz at 140 pounds. And I think I would give Mikey the advantage over Jose over Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor at 140 pounds. So, but the reason the fight can't happen is because Bob Aaron won't entertain it. Bob Aaron won't entertain it. So Mikey Garcia says, well, I got to go to 147 because I can't make fights at 140. Bob Aaron won't let me. See, I should have said that. I hate when you get, the, you ever know you get these things when you're doing it in a different video or, you know, you just, somebody insults you and you don't really have a really good witty comeback and the witty comeback hits you, you know, like a couple hours later and you're like, dang, I should have said that. That's how I feel about that. But back onto this subject, Mikey Garcia has to fight at 147 pounds, can't make 135. And if he could make 135, it wouldn't make a difference because Bob Arum's got 135 locked up too. And Bob Arum ain't making no fights for him. So he's at 147 and he's got to look for an opponent which can make him money and give him a chance and to put him himself in a situation where he can get a championship shot. And that would be guys like Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, and your Danny Zugas. But Mikey... Did not say your Danny Zoo guys. He said the bigger, the two bigger names, uh, Sean Porter and uh, Keith Thurman. Now, how that those fights would play out, 
I think that he gets beat up by uh I think he gets beat up by Sean Porter. I think that he gets outboxed by I think he gets beat outboxed by Keith Thurman. I think the reason though that you keep that that he might want those guys next is because they're both coming off losses. Like you ever notice like how people there's like Mikey Garcia is one uh is a guy that comes from a boxing family and he's a very bright guy in the business of boxing and he knows how fights work. One good example of that, of, of his savvy outside of the ring as it relates to boxing is his fight with his fight with Adrian Brauner, where he, even though he was not the, he's not the top dog on that bill dictated to, uh, to Adrian Bronner that Adrian Bronner couldn't come in above 142 and if he did I think that might have been the catch weight whatever the catch weight was it was like a half a million dollars don't quote me on that dollar amount but I know it was enough to make I think it was like a half a million dollars that if 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 Adrian Bronner came in under came in over work weight Mikey Garcia would get you know an extra five hundred thousand dollars if he came over and i think it might not i don't think it was per pound but it was some crazy sanction he put on um a penalty he put on adrian Bronner if he missed weight so as a result adrian Bronner came in two pounds underweight like completely drained himself and you see that how that how that move played on the mind of Adrian Bronner and gave Mikey Garcia uh, a further advantage in that fight. Mikey Garcia might have won that fight, but, you know, Mikey Garcia kind of gamed that a little bit. And you could also see it in how Mikey Garcia um, advised uh, Leo Santa Cruz not to take the fight with Javante Davis at 135 to take it down at 130 and hope that Javante Davis really has problems making that weight and gets and so he's drained right basically advised Leo Santa Cruz to do the same thing that with Javante Davis that he did with Adrian Bronner right so you you know how he kind of plays that stuff so the reason so him calling out Keith Thurman and Sean Porter coming off losses yeah, that makes me think, yeah, that that's kind of how Mikey rolls, right? You don't want to you wouldn't want to fight your Danny Zugas because your Danny Zugas, number one, is not an ex-champion like Sean Porter and like Keith Thurman is. And also, he's not coming off of a loss. He hasn't lost in a he hasn't lost in a while. And even in the loss that he did have against Sean Porter is highly is highly questionable and not something that is going to make him uh any less confident. Uh, any less confident, and and Sean Porter didn't show uh, your Danny's Ugas any type of you know didn't really show any any um, weaknesses in your Danny's Ugas, except for the fact that your Danny's Ugas is a bit of a stalker, right? Like he's just plodding, he's plodding forward, coming to get you, and Sean Porter could beat him on the back foot. That's not the way Mikey Garcia. I don't know if Mikey Garcia is going to be able to pull that off with a guy like your Danny's Ugas. So he might wind up getting stopped. Like, I think that Sean Porter beats him. I think Terrence, I think, um, think, I think Sean Porter beats him. I think uh, Keith Thurman beats him. But I think your Danny's Ugas, I think your Danny's Ugas knocks him out. Now, the other thing that is, that is interesting out of this is the fact that Mikey Garcia is not talking about, he's not talking about Manny Pacquiao. And he's talking about, at least the article that I read talked about when the PBC is able to make fights again, that's who Mikey Garcia is looking at. So you hear Mikey Garcia looking to fight PBC fighters, unlike what he did in his last fight, which was against Jesse Vargas, who's a former PBC fighter, but currently managed or currently promoted by, um, by matchroom and fighting on the zone. You know, he went over there. Mikey Garcia went over there to the zone to fight, um, to fight, Jesse Vargas, and there was talks about him fighting Manny Pacquiao on DAZN. Well, with all of this crazy stuff going on with the virus and all that, man, I'm telling you, first of all, uh, DAZN may not be around. So <laughs> I know they want to make that Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin fight now because now they probably, I can't even imagine, I can't imagine how many, um, can't imagine how many subscribers DAZN has lost. So that very well may not be a option for my for Manny Pacquiao going for, forward. If if the zone is going to continue to invest that amount of that amount of money in fights, they're going to have to do something really big that's going to push 
people to who who unsubscribed to to the zone to resubscribe to the zone and that is going to be a hard pitch for a uh, man a while because even when boxing comes back boxing might come back where you can't fight in front of a crowd if you can't fight in front if you can't fight in front of a crowd um the big you're not going to be able to afford you're really not going to be able to afford some of the bigger fights to be made because these guys also get paid off of the crowd unless that is the zone wants to just triple down on the, their model and say whatever we don't care about a pro, uh, a crowd we'll pay the go, we'll pay the going rates for fights i don't see that happening and you know as a result i see mikey back over there with the pbc um fighting for slightly less money because they're going to have to fight indoors for a while but all all that all in all um I like that Mikey Garcia is still trying to get fights at 147 pounds. I do believe that he would fight Sean Porter. He would fight Keith Thurman. Uh, but at the same time, I just don't. And I say that not just because I believe, you know, that the guy's got heart, but also I believe that he doesn't really have a lot of choice because I'm not sure. Um, you know, excuse me. I'm not sure where else he's going to be i just don't know where else he's going to be able to go you know what i mean but anyway it is what it is you tell me how you think those fights play out i would prefer to see mikey garcia versus your danies ugas and keith thurman versus sean porter rematch and maybe the winner of those two fights can fight but you know i want to see ugas in the mix and mikey garcia i think should have to prove it against a against a against a guy like ugas versus going right for the top dogs because i don't think mikey garcia is a top dog in the welterweight division he's a big name he's a name but i don't think he's a top dog anyway it is what it is you let me know what you think in the comment section and with that i'm out peace